welcome to episode number five of Real Reviews. Today we have Lewis and Sergio with us, and of course myself, Greg. Um, we have a bunch of really, really cool reels. And before we get into it, I'd just love to have Sergio introduce himself and talk about some of the cool things he's doing, because Sergio also does lots of super awesome education stuff um, in the space. So yeah, I'll, I'll let you just take away. Oh, thanks. Um, hi, I'm Sergio. Uh, I run my own business, composing music and sound designing for video games. I also teach at ThinkSpace Education. I do coaching. I love teaching, which is why I love the fact that I'm hanging out with these guys. Um, um, and yes, I'm putting stuff up on my YouTube and building that. And, you know, I've got a little FMOD series going and I've got some game audio theory stuff to come in the next few weeks, which I'm very excited to finally release. Um, that's pretty much it. I'm working on a couple of games, freelancing 100% working from home. And yep, yeah, can't wait to get into it. You can today. also, and you should definitely check out the YouTube channel. I've just posted it into the uh, chat. Um, Sergio does lots of stuff in FMOD specifically, and he's doing a really, really good tutorial series, um, which is like short and concise and to the point. So for sure, check that out. Um, and yeah. Let's get into the demo reel. So we are starting with Javi, and this time we've got a full, uh, we've got four reels rather than clips. So this is exciting. Let's nice. start. Awesome. Very nice. Very nice. Great reel. Um, first impressions, everyone. So I, I'll just get, get it started this time around. Um, I'm going to play these in the background with silence. Um, so yeah, first off, I think so general impressions. I really love that you actually have like all of the writing on screen, which is really important. The one thing is, I would say is just maybe like make it a little bit smaller and put it a little bit down. I know this is nothing to do with the audio, but it's kind of because it's like in the lower like third of the screen, it still kind of obstructs a lot of gameplay. And um, for me, when I listen, it's just a little bit of a distraction. So just bring it down maybe to the bottom. Um, and then on a, on a sound basis, uh, you've got a lot of really cool stuff in here. But one of the things that I kind of notice overall is that um, there's a little bit of a lack of kind of uh, heavy transients. So to accentuate kind of a bunch of the um, uh, like more impactful moments and also ambiences is a big thing for me. There's very little ambiences. So I would love to hear more like what is going on around the whole space um, and yeah, what's what's happening here. So. Sergio, do you want to go next? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I agree with what you said. That's a really good point. The ambience helps everything else kind of sit in the scene a little bit better. And at the moment, it feels like stuff is sticking out. Or it doesn't feel quite natural. And I think that's, like you said, it's not having enough ambience kind of sitting behind, and which is, I think, an easy thing to, to miss. We, I think we all miss that at the start, right? Forgetting to, to put ambiences in properly. Um, one thing I did notice was during the Solar Ash I love the Cowboy Bebop stuff, but the Solar Ash one, I noticed the the reverb that you used didn't quite fit the 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 outside um, environment that you had. It felt more inside. I think if, if we listen to it again afterwards, we'll, um, you'd see that. So just just be a little bit wary with the the reverb stuff. Um, outside reverbs are a little bit of a pain, or they're less obvious 
then indoor indoor is easy you just measure the size of the room and you just put the reverb accordingly outside you want to have more of a delay on that um um what do you call it the the pre-delay pre-delay is the key i found with with outside reverbs um and the cowboy b4 well, i really like that one i really like that it was it felt very minimal like anime kind of goes for it's not like over describing the scene um yeah those are the initial thoughts but um, and what you were saying i really like that transition like what you said greg about the text i know it, it's not part of the sound design but the presentation is so much like part of making a good reel and like capturing people's attentions we don't have to become video editors but i really like that transition those smooth transitions really help sell the time and effort that you've put into the piece of work yeah for sure lewis what do you think yeah, I agree with everything everyone said. Um, yeah, special plus one to like, yeah, the video editing kind of like and the smooth cuts. It's weird how video editing is always the thing I talk about so much with these show rules, but it really just make a lot of difference. Like that first transition where it kind of like cuts from the hit to the explosion, it's just like, just made me smile. <laughs> and yeah. that's what you want. Um, with, uh, yeah, with the ambiences, I think, yeah, I do agree. It was, a, it was probably the main, if not only thing I'd like really noticed for the entire show. And it was over every clip. Of the ambiences and obviously we can say like you know build them up etc like everyone's been saying more details i think just make them louder as well like because they're really just like super quiet and i think more detail louder would really help but one thing i think it also needs um really i, I was going to suggest for the cowboy b-boy uh, cowboy bebop clip but you said you actually quite like the minimalism of it so maybe don't do this but i think as well as ambiences kind of like whooshes on like camera movement i think would be a good addition to some of these clips um for instance, this one here, like, in, I'd expect to hear, like, woo, 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 of every kind of pillar that kind of wishes past the camera, especially when it's like the camera's right next to a wall. Um, maybe doesn't fit the style of the anime. I don't really watch anime, so I don't know. But um, like, was in some of the other clips, there's lots of kind of like, you know, quick whooshes where the camera twists around or zooms forward. Um, and again, because the ambiences are so quiet and static, it doesn't really feel like very weighty. It feels very, it doesn't really feel correct. But I think for a show, you can kind of add more kind of wind bushes. Where, uh, we'll, we'll loop around in a second for video, and I can show you what I mean. Um, but more kind of wind bushes as it kind of twists and turns, like a, uh, this one maybe could do it's like the slow motion effects, could have had like a, a bit of wind bus, wind stuff, that kind of like a big camera zips back and zips back in again, kind of like a woof, woof type thing. Um, likewise, all this kind of stuff as well, like, you know, every kind of fast movement. This one here, you should be able to like, feel the wind brushing through your face when it does those quick, you know, zooms forwards and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I say that all kind of falls under an animation and cinematics, basically. Um, apart from that, one other teensy note, which was the clips towards the end, which was the stuff that I think you actually designed and invented yourself. Um, when, when they kicked over the slime in a bucket here, <laughs> this thing here, um, where is it? This sound, I know it's not playing, but the sound when the slime in the bucket dies, I just thought it could be yeah, a bit better, a bit more, a bit more detailed, a bit more improved. Um, kind of just felt a bit, it just felt a bit flat. Could I add a bit more of an impact to it? Kind of leads into what Greg said as well, more transients. I was like, I, I, you kind of expect kind of like a, a ding, but you can just get a color, color, a roll. <laughs> well, we'll go into all of these things now then. So yeah, like. Great details in that case let's let's go clip by clip um we'll not do too long because we need to get through every one of them um and i think to be fair you've you've both mentioned some really great detail points as well so shall, we, shall we just do the first one or two clips because yeah i know we always run over when we do entire show yeah, exactly <laughs> <laughs> let's do that so let's start with the first one Awesome. So I think for actually what we could do is if we wanted to, um, we could maybe each pick a clip and shall we do that? Or, or do we all just join in on one to be up fair, to you? I, 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 I was just about to bounce off what you said originally was that, um, the low impact stuff material, that kind of information is missing a little bit and you can feel it there, especially with the, um, the the spirit attack or whatever you want to call it for the for the final attack here with the shadow shadow of war stuff it do, it feels like you've got that crackle that nice mid kind of crunch on top but the impact i can't feel it's clearly a big attack and this is going to come onto the thing that i always tell like students to remember and to repeat in their heads over and over again any sound you do any piece of music whatever 
always ask yourself, what is the story? Mm. Not just what you're describing literally on the screen, but what are you trying to tell the player? What is the game trying to tell the player? Here, clearly, it's a big move and it should feel powerful. At the moment, you're not feeling that from the sound. So that mini narrative, that mini story behind the sound isn't being described to its fullest, I feel. Yeah, for sure. Uh, let's just pile in on one clip, I would say then. Um, I think this yeah, is this a great example. Is, good. This has a lot of the, I think, really, really good stuff in there, what you've done, um, but also some of the, uh, I guess, issues here of, of the entire reel. Um, yeah, for sure, to build on what Sergio said, let's just give it a little bit. You've got some really good foley in here, some um, kind of the sword swings and stuff. It's again, comes down to that transient, exactly what, what we've already said. And also what I would do here is um, more details. So I would almost say split the redesign into like ambience, um, sound effects and Foley. Um, and then you can even say Foley, um, what is this, a troll? and then Foley for the main character, the player character. And then that way you can kind of really pick it apart and, and do an entire track lay for the the troll and then also for the player character. And that way you won't kind of like miss out on stuff when you do the whole thing and forget later. And once you then put it together, I would say that um, you can then kind of go and get rid of some things because it might be too much at that point. So it's kind of always a figuring out like where to add stuff and where to subtract stuff. But it's usually easier to kind of take things away. Um, so I personally tend to throw a lot of things at it first and then take things away as I go. And um, in here, for example, we've already said like the ambiences. Kind of like look at looking at what's around the player. Like there's a, this is snow, there's probably cold wind howls. There's some fires, there's um, probably some orcs like and trolls screaming in the distance and some wooden creeks and stuff. So there's a bunch of things that you could bring in. And even though it's not the center point of it, it just adds a bunch of um, really good kind of um, filler, I guess, to, to put the whole thing into context. Lewis, do you want to add some stuff to this? Yeah, totally agree with everybody. Um, I say being really kind of nitpicky because I guess when's, when else would you be nitpicky rather than on this live stream? I think some of the sword sound effects, um, they kind of sound, it, it sounds like not the same sword throughout the whole clip, if that makes sense. So there's a couple sounds where I feel like the sword's a bit too stereo, where it should be mono. The sword's a bit loud in some places and quiet in other places. I can hear a lot of kind of the same kind of stuff, but for some reason, the actual sword hits, I just, I'm not quite believing. And to be fair, part of it would be fixed by kind of adding more impacts and deep transients and layers and all this kind of stuff. It would really help kind of bed it all together anyway. Uh, but if it's still kind of like, you know, feeling a bit iffy after all that extra stuff, I'd say, yeah, maybe revisit the swords and the hit sounds. Um, it kind of sounds more like kind of like lots of kind of metal reversing type sounds rather than like the traditional kind of like sword swipes and hits and stuff. Um, I can't really put my finger on it though, to be honest. What do you two think? Yeah, I, I know what you're saying. There's something not, there's something missing. I think it's what you're saying. I think maybe the sword needs a couple more layers and a little bit more consistency. I have trouble sometimes discerning between what's the enemy and what's um, Talion. I just remembered his name. Uh, Talion sword swings and and Olog or whatever his name is. And I I think that's important again for the story of the the gameplay to tell you like what you're doing versus what you're affecting in the environment. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think to build upon that, it's basically the thing is this is actual gameplay footage, and with gameplay footage, um, it needs to be really, really clear kind of what's happening, what is the player doing, what is the enemy doing, how do I need to react? So there are a couple of button prompts here, like a, and this is like a slowdown. So it we should have some kind of maybe a UI notification or a big like whoop, before it comes like a rise of like. Whoop, and then it happens and then it, the riser stops and there's maybe a success thing of like whing, or something. Maybe not that because you've got a lot of sword info, but basically something to, to give the player the information of like quick time event or something like that or button bash. Button bash successful, you've done the combo and the next thing. So yeah. And, and lastly, I think it's always a really interesting exercise to um, 
to listen to your material at different volumes because when you turn things down you'll only hear like the most the uh, kind of the the biggest things that that are sticking out and so there uh, you can see like oh do i have enough transients to highlight those key moments or is it are things getting lost in the mix and the same thing for when it's loud is like oh are the or these things maybe too sharp or the frequencies too much and stuff like that so yeah I think that pretty much covers it for this clip. Yeah. Let's. Can, oh, yeah, yeah, can, sure. Can I have one, one more note? Sorry. I, I think I cracked maybe what I would do differently with the swords um, just after listening to it a few more times. I think what I try, and I'm not saying it's a thing to do, but like what I personally try in this situation, I think because it's quite a kind of thick, chunky sword, it's not, it's not like one of the kind of flimsy ones from Pride of the Caribbean. I think there's too much, in my opinion, there's too much emphasis on the like bzing, as you start swinging it and not enough in, like, emphasis on the impacts. So say if you kind of like take out or really lower the volume of the actual whooshes and replace them with more kind of just like kind of, you know, bamboo stick whooshes type of thing, and then add a kind of the ching kind of like ding sword element on the impacts instead, I think that might help my issue anyway. Because it sounds like it's like zing, 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 when it should be like wooding, wooding, wooding. My, my vocal sound design is awful. <laughs> so, Lovely. I agree with what you said. I agree. Yeah, well, really quickly before we move on, I, I'd suggest watching stuff like Warhammer Vermintide, and you'll see what, what exactly what Lewis is talking about. There's very little emphasis on the swing, and it's all about the impact. Yeah, I think one of the big things as well is it will give it a lot of clarity when you um, when you have that whoosh and then the impact versus the shing, and then like not a big impact. So you get a lot more like the the feeling uh, of of yeah the stuff happening. Also. Huge shout out to Steve and Noah. Thank you so much for your support. Really, really appreciate it. All the money goes towards keeping the game audio learning website alive because that stuff is expensive, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, thanks a lot for one, the support. One, one last note. When you, when you do the sword impacts, it would be awesome to hear differences between hitting armor and hitting the like the flesh and stuff. So yeah, you have you can really kind of play around with like having really great impacts uh, depending on what you hit. 100%. Um, yes. Yeah. So, what clip do we want to go into next? Solar Ash or Cowboy Bebop? Or do we... I, I think this... I one... like what you were... Sorry. Yeah, go, go, on, go on. I was just going to say, I like what Lewis was touching on with the left behind the personal project, I believe it was, the, the, the slime bucket. I was recently talking to Jonas Turner, the sound designer behind like Scorchbringer and Cult of the Lamb. Jonas is amazing, and he, he made it really simple. He was like, he discovered that each sound should have a transient, and then it's a case of how much transient does each one need, how much attack does each one need. So it's almost like everybody, every one of them has a nice like hit kind of attack to it, and then you decide the importance of that. And I think that's what's missing, right? Because you have the slime, which is nice, but you're missing that initial feedback, that initial reinforcement to say, yes, you've done something and it's successful. And then here's the material that you just hit. Here's the sludge, but you need that first kind of bat kind of sound. Yeah, for sure. Definitely agree. Let's give it a listen. Yeah. All the sounds in here are yeah. great, I think, by the way, though. Like, the, mm. the, the sounds themselves sound really good. The little pitter-patter of the footsteps is fantastic. Um, the ambiences are good in this one as well. Yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. I would say, like, just to take this a little bit out of context into the fuller picture of the reel as well, I think um, so. There's a there's a lot of really cool clips in here, but you've got like some kind of like yeah, this which is more anime, and then this which uh, I'm not sure exactly what it is from. A cutscene then gameplay, right? Oh yeah, it is. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> it is my bad. I thought this was separate. So this is all good. Um but yeah, I would potentially take out in fact I would definitely take out the cowboy bebop. It mm. just doesn't really add that much, in my opinion, to the reel. And I feel like it more distracts from the whole thing about game audio as well. And there's like not yeah, there's not huge amounts happening. It is a relatively cool scene, but I would almost say that this 
is more interesting um, for me, um, especially unless you would add tons more detail and like put way more work into this. But I think this is a yeah really cool element. So. I think all the big improvement points we've really touched upon here is like adding transients, right? Adding a lot more clarity to that, um, more details, I would say. Um, any, any, anything else, Sergio? Um, sorry, I've just, just to double check that Cowboy Bebop isn't a game version of the anime, is it? Because it said Bandai Namco on it. Oh no, it's film work. Okay, no, yeah. never mind. Okay, so yeah, I totally agree with what you said. Also because you're, this is meant to be like portraying who you are to, um, a potential like uh, indie dev who's looking to recruit someone or a studio or whatever so you kind of want to deliver the message of like what kind of sound designer are you and it's great that you've used your own games at the end which is fantastic and uh, but maybe the other clips now next time you can think of like um what's the kind of consistent thread between it? what kind of sound design do you want to create do you want to create for indie games in which case just use indie games just use solo ash and a couple others don't use uh, Shadow of War, unless you want to do AAA stuff, in which case switch the other ones. You know that kind of again another narrative of like what kind of sound designer do you want to present yourself as? I'd say. Hundred percent agree with that. This is something we have a lot in this, and it's always worth repeating for sure. Um, I think yeah, it's like the your a little window into kind of who you are as a sound designer. You've put that so nicely, Sergio. I love it. <laughs> Yeah. Any any notes on 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 this clip? Um, oh, in particular, this clip, yeah, like um, just reinforcing that. Try, I I like the sounds as well. Yeah. We've been we've been hanging on to maybe the the critic the critique of it, but I actually really like the sounds. I think it's very satisfying. The the shot that the enemy fires is very nice, very satisfying satisfying sound. Again, I think that also needs a transient, and that's like that transient is almost like. You could almost put it in the realm of being like a UI in terms of the feedback that it's giving to the player. It's it's informing the player that they've been hit or they are hitting something. And then and perhaps another good test is is closing your eyes and figuring out like can I discern between my sound design? Especially with that Shadow of War clip. Like if I close my eyes and A and B it against the, the real thing and, and see how you feel listening to that without watching it and then listening to yours without watching it, and then see if you can hear something, notice something that you're you're missing um, but clearly you know how to sound design clearly you can create some very very satisfying sound effects and now it's just the case of um now you're in a great position to go in and put more more detail 100 percent agree all right next clip by steve or next reel rather let's jump in <laughs> Pretty badass. <laughs> Some metal. <laughs> yeah. Very metal. I'm into it already. Hundred percent. Lewis, you get to start first impressions. Yeah, cool. By the way, I have to start on this one. There's nothing to say. It's amazing. <laughs> um, okay, in real talk. No, but uh, Steve, this is awesome. Um, and I've said it to you before. Like the amount you've improved like, in like the last month alone is insane. So yeah, yeah really awesome to see. Like the Star Wars clip was playing now. It's just like awesome. It's awesome, awesome, awesome. You know, but the actual from like a Cheryl point of view, like just on a whole basis of it, like the whole thing is like super fast paced. It's really exciting. You know, there's a lot of sound going on to be fair. Like it's very in your face, it's very punchy. It's, it's 
you know, it doesn't really suit, if you're applying for like, you know, to work on something like, you know, a game like Limbo, which is really minimalist, it's not really the show for that, but like, that's fine in my opinion. It's like, it's very AAA, it's very big, it's heavy, it shows a lot of stuff in a short amount of time. I think you've really kind of like shown your kind of like personality through it as well. Um, uh, yeah, just, it's awesome. And also we always say to people to never put music in the San Jose Cheerio. This is the exception because <laughs> I think the music that plays in the, um, in the kind of like the, the fighting game, I don't know what game it is, but like this 2D fighting game, um, it, cause it's like a diegetic music that's within the scene and it kind of fades away as you walk away from it, but you go towards it. Obviously it's kind of like unrealistic and it's very arcadey, but it's awesome. And it really kind of like sets the mood really, really well in my opinion. Um, so yeah, it should just goes goes to say that rules are meant to be broken because I think the music in this clip actually works really, really well. And I guess it is because it's kind of like musical sound design. Um, but yeah, it's just awesome. Uh, my only note would be, um, yeah, maybe at, I, I think the end, the very, very, very end, like the, the outro title card thing. I'm just not quite believing the um, like the paper burning sound, like super, super small note. Like of all of all the stuff you've got, there's a very, very last sound. It's just I'm not quite believing. Um, I think it just sounds a bit too. Let's have a listen. Yes, it sounds a bit too. Yeah. I think it could just be a bit more like abstract. Uh, and I'm and I'm aware that before Steve, I said you should make it more papery. So I know that like I'm just going back on my word. But something about it isn't just is quite rubbing me the wrong way. And it's I wouldn't really notice or care as much if it wasn't the very last thing you'd hear, because it's like it's leaving the impression, isn't it really? Uh, if that was in the middle of a clip, I wouldn't ever remember to talk now. Um, but yeah, it's just it's awesome. It's really really great. Um, I get. I guess the only other thing I could say is that like the intro clip again, whilst it's three D, it's exciting. It's got awesome sound. Like maybe it's a bit long. If you have like a shorter version of the intro clip, you could use instead. Maybe, but like to be honest, I'm really kind of you know clutching at straws here because it is it's really really awesome. It sounds amazing. I mean, it must be good. You must. It must be good if you're the thing that you're critiquing is the the intro and outro clips, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think yeah, I know absolutely. what you mean about the paper burning. It sounds more like like jeans material ripping rather than papery and kind of tactile. Maybe that's that's a shout. And maybe you just need one of them. Maybe you just need that intro clip at the end instead, for instance, instead of both of them. Although I think it's awesome. I thought it was very brave of you to do a Star Wars clip, and and it was and it was great, like you said. Um, Again, I think you're in a perfect position to now like go in and really dial in and think about the gameplay. That clip, I can't remember what game this is. The 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 PVE game, the multiplayer, the the. Um, I know wait, the name and I. Nailhead. What's his name? <laughs> Dead Nail by daylight. Head. I think. Dead by daylight. I'm pretty sure that's it. What's his name? Demon head, nail head. Um. Uh, the, I, demon. Hmm, I know head. this because we've been talking oh, about come this recently. <laughs> It's, it's not Nailhead, but now it's a Nailhead. All I can think of is Nailhead. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's his nail. Nailhead. <laughs> nail, Hellraiser, like, right? Uh, Hellraiser. Pinhead, right? It's a pin pinhead. Is it, is it Pinhead? Pinhead from Hellraiser, right? Yeah, that's I think the one. That's it, yeah. <laughs> nailhead. <laughs> yes, yeah, Nailhead. I prefer Nailhead. So, Nailhead, that clip was. I actually really liked it because it was like this weird like cutscene within gameplay. So it's a really cool clip to like choose and like show off your skills to. And and maybe now you're in a perfect position to go in and like I agree with what you said, Lewis, as well. Like it feels like an onslaught of sound, like a barrage sometimes. Maybe it's a little hard to like pick out the details. So now you can go in and I feel like you should fine tune it. For instance, like a really specific thing when another character name I don't remember, it's not BB8, it's the other one. <laughs> R23P or whatever his name is. Oh, I can't remember his name. The, the, Star, the, Wars yeah. the <laughs> Star Wars droid. The Star Wars droid. Jumps on the back of Darth Vader and the electricity that he uses or it uses, um, maybe that needs to be a little bit more uh, characteristic to the droid as opposed to the, the lightsabers and the other electricity based sounds in the, in the scene. If I'm if I'm remembering that correctly, um, I feel like it's it was hard. Just the little things like that so you can really like go in and fine tune and be like, okay, this sound could be more. Let's take um, a listen. Yeah. You can't even hear it. Yeah. It sounds, so you've got the electricity of the lightsabers and then the, the droids electricity, I don't think I can pick it out just yet. So little things like that, but it's a great kind of to me, it feels like this really nice marble that you can go in and like refine even further. 
because it, it's satisfying. You've got that the impacts and the transients and stuff. It it was enjoyable, definitely. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, for for me personally, it's just you know to to harp on what these two wonderful people to have just said. Uh, sounds incredible. Really, really feels like this is you. Um, so like it's got so much personality in it is what what I'm trying to say. Um, I think for me to so you know I could keep going on all of all of the great great amazing stuff. Um, but I'll just go a little bit nitpicky here. Um, to give you some some feedback. So for me, I think to build on what uh, Sergio and and Lewis have said, um, there's a little bit more detail stuff in terms of gameplay information that needs to stand out a little bit. I would say if you're if you're going uh, if you especially in gameplay clips in like cutscenes, it's totally cool. But for stuff like exactly what with the droid jumping on. It's got a button prompt. Um, here, we've got a button prompt. And so that stuff, when you think of like accessibility, we need to know like, all right, so you need to press the button now, this is happening, and then something happens, and then that causes Darth Vader to like actually uh, kind of, you know, interrupt his, his whole attack and whatnot so i think those small things exactly what sergio said like build upon that that's brilliant i just refine it um the other thing is is that i so you have really really amazing in your face sounds one of the things though that uh, i think especially when it comes to gameplay stuff is play a little bit with mono so there's everything feels really really stereo i'm sure there's a bunch of mono stuff in there as well but uh, making things mono and then putting them in the world with like just by having them a bit more panned and stuff it will yeah making things mono will basically just feel like it will be placed in the world so much more so just like experiment with that and play with it because a lot of it is super super stereo and um and then that kind of um, sometimes feels like it's a little bit hard to pinpoint what is happening where so by making things mono uh, you can place them way better and you can add that extra layer of clarity um, to the sounds because not everything is happening right, you know, in both ears and stuff. So use the stereo spectrum wisely. Um, and then, yeah, I think that the last thing as well here, um, I'm a huge fan of like smoke and ash kind of sound design and all of that stuff. And here I would also say like the, the material ripping doesn't quite work for me. Instead, what, what you can also try is to use like tissues and stuff to roll them against the microphone like that and like process them and use different cellophane and stuff and put them through reverbs and things and then you can get that really cool like ash like type stuff i spent a long time doing like a uh, redesign and that those are some things that i took away from that so definitely try to experiment with that i would say because it's it's exactly i usually wouldn't really notice but because it's like the the last thing it's like you really focus on it and it's like eh. so i think like yeah leave leave with a really really on a on a high note so i would just say um uh, that's important and and as well because the intros are and outro are so long um which to be fair they're like you know, because they're so cool and animated, it, it adds a lot in their own effect. But um, yeah, I would I would say those those are some main things. I think we've pretty much gone through everything already. I don't think we need to do a detail clip here. I think we've added lots of details. So can I can I, can I just have one can, last yeah, yeah, word? Absolutely. In? But yes, I do agree. I think um yeah. So I'd say with the um with the because two points really with the, the intros and outros, I say. We're kind of talking about like here so you can make them sound better, etc. To be honest, the easiest thing you should do, and probably the thing I imagine you should do, I think Sergio mentioned earlier, is just get rid of the intro and replace the outro clip with the intro clip. Because I think it makes it a bit shorter. It kind of gets straight to the, the Star Wars stuff, which is awesome. And I don't think you should be putting anything between the viewer and watching that, because it's really, really cool. Um, but if you are going to kind of just keep it as it is for whatever reason, um, again, maybe with the outro stuff, with like this the kind of paper burning type thing, um, just you could just just try like something which is completely out there. It doesn't need to be, you know, really realistic paper burning. You know, this is this is going to be a wild suggestion, but trust me, it'll work. If you put in a bunch of really reverberant dolphin clicking sonar noises, like 
like that honestly that with a bunch of whooshes and fire underneath it that'll sound amazing so like just play around with like completely random things you might find something you enjoy even more and again like i think it, that's another way to kind of show your personality through rather than just kind of going for what we're telling you to do because like you know you've got so much cool stuff in there and i know you can come up with something amazing for it um the other note again just with the whole thing and it's I think I mentioned at the start, I was like, yeah, so it's really punchy, it's really in your face, it's kind of barrage of sounds, it sounds really cool, it sounds really fat, it sounds great. And then Sergio said, like, it is a kind of like, you know, barrage of sounds, it's very, very dense, very compressed. And like, that is, that is good. <laughs> it's, it's, I rather it be kind of like, you know, too much going on than too little, in my opinion. I know people, some people disagree. Same. Um, you could try, there's two things. One is that, yeah, you could probably play with the mixing a little bit. Where say, for instance, for like say the Star Wars clip, like break up all this kind of stuff you've got already into like stems, which is basically kind of like, you know, ambiences, you know, lightsabers, foley, footsteps, you know, vocals and stuff. And play around of like bring up bring all the stems down to zero and kind of like do a like dynamic mix through the clip where for each kind of like, you know, few seconds on screen, you the most important things are loudest. So for instance, like with say the lightsabers, when there's like, you know, mid-swinging lightsabers, then bring the lightsabers up way more than the rest of the stuff. Um, and when they're kind of like talking, bring the dialogue up and duck everything else. Because I think they do, correct me if I'm wrong to be fair, because I, I don't work in film post, but I think that's the kind of technique they do a lot in film post where like even, you know, there, there can be a lightsaber in the middle of the screen, but if it's not relevant to the plot, you will hardly hear a thing. Um, so like maybe you could do that to try and like make it a bit less of a barrage of sounds, make it a bit more clear, um, a bit less overwhelming. A bit less overwhelming. Um, however, to be the devil's advocate of myself, I think for a showreel, you're allowed to make things kind of like bigger than they would be in a film or in the actual game. Like you're trying to win people's attention and this wins your attention. So I'm not even saying it's the right thing to do, but it might be a thing to worth playing around with. You might find you do something like that and you enjoy it a little bit more and you think it's a bit better, but it might, you know, it might make it worse. So it's kind of up to you to try it and see how it goes, I suppose. Um, but yeah, that's what I, was gonna say. I love that advice. I think it's great practice as well. And, you know, that kind of stuff happens when we make games as well, where we figure out what's the most important thing. And we have lots of lots of stuff at our disposal, lots of lots of great tools to mix and we can duck things. So we can say when that quick time event of the droid jumping on the shoulder comes up, um, you know, that ducks the bus of the weapons, maybe and the ambience and whatnot. So we can control those things in the game as well. And of course, in linear media, it's even easier. You can just press volume automation, whatever, V and Reaper, and just draw it out. So yeah, definitely really good yeah. advice from Lewis. That, that was a great, sorry to keep going. That was a great clip uh, I saw online. I think everyone's probably seen it. There's a, like someone accidentally released or intentionally released the trailer of a new uh, Transformers film without any musical yeah. dialogue. It was just for sound effects. It sounded mm -hmm. amazing. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, I think it's been posted fairly recently on airbuggles.com, so you should all go check that out. I know you all know about it already. Um, but like when, when you when you look, watch that clip, obviously, obviously it sounds amazing, but there's lots of stuff in there which doesn't have sound like as you would if you were to redesign it like as its own clip because it's no because it's going to be you know mastered music and dialogue like they haven't really bothered with the sounds that aren't essential to the plot. So there's some bits where like you know there's a car in the background it doesn't make a noise. But it's just going to add, do nothing but kind of like cloud up the mix. And for a trailer, they don't want to do that. So like you can get away of kind of like, <laughs> I feel like it's the opposite of all the advice I've ever said on this live stream is that you can get away of not having all these details. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think you just have to see really, because like when there's so much stuff going on and if there's something like, like that robot, for instance, the robot is so important to the plot, but obviously the lightsabers are so loud, the cinematics are so loud, it's drowning the, the robot out, the droid out. And so you can bring that other stuff down more than it like realistically would, basically. Um, anyway, sorry, I'm going on about it too much. Let's move on. You know, you're in ED1. a good position when when Lewis <laughs> says, you know, do less. <laughs> <laughs> the droid is called BD1, by the way. Excellent. I just remember as well. Nice. I'll be the person to remember all the characters this stream. <laughs> Perfect. That was a great point, by the way, Lewis. Totally agree. Cool. So we've got Soundwich, aka Damien. Let's jump in. I can't hear anything. Yeah, me neither, because I've got it muted. Very Let's minimal. Let's jump in again.
Well, that was pretty freaking awesome as well. Very this nice. Well in, insane, insane. Really, really good. Right. Do you want to start this time with first impressions, Sergio? Or do you yes. Wanna... I think my woo said it all. That was awesome. What a roller coaster. And just, and the cuts as well, like the video editing. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, again, I think it definitely makes an impression straight away. I think you start off quite modestly with that clip um from arcane compared to and that's not again that's not a that's not a game is it i'm no, mistaken it's not a game okay i mean all right of so Legends it's, is it's, a game, it's, but it's a series yeah it's a show game. based on a game yeah. so I'll, Shh, person, personally i'll allow it but no it isn't a game <laughs> i mean it counts as a cutscene, right if you if you really want to yeah put it that way. So, yeah it's, it's fine so that okay so that's one thing so Okay, it, okay, first of all, it sounds really great, sounds really impactful. You've definitely made a really big impression. But now looking at the whole clips, I realized uh, one thing that stood, the, the first thing that stood out to me where I was like distracted was this League of Legends uh, sequence. Because it feels like you cut from clip to clip before the thing that's about to happen happens. I don't know whether that's from the original clip and there's nothing afterwards, but it feels like I was waiting to hear the, the gunshot from that uh, from that gray, gray character. I, I know nothing about League of Legends, here Jane. we go. The gray character when he was about to shoot i was like where's where's the, the gunshot you know so i think the thing that's holding this reel back from being like like sky high is is the choice of clips um and because the, the hyper light star breaker that might as well be close to the original man like what what a cash would have done because it sounds great you've got that bubbly kind of organic texture that was so done so well the cutscene for example this Smoky guy, dust guy, disappears Great straight away. Thing, yeah. Then we got the gray guy, pulls out his gun, and then, ah! Oh, and it just feels like such an anticlimactic moment. Um, and yeah, looking through all the clips, they're all cutscenes. So I don't know whether it would be a good idea to maybe put a, like a one or two, or even just one gameplay clip, just to show that you understand, you know, you've considered gameplay aspects, not just linear sound design. Um, and oh, there was something else. This, I know it's again another really tiny thing, but that 18 Peggy sign on the left hand side is so distracting. I don't know whether you could put maybe the text over that so that I don't have to see it, but my eye was just drawn straight to that. Again, that's nothing, that's not your fault or problem, but maybe there's some way of covering it up because my eyes were drawn there instead of watching the some of the, the clips. Um, I think that's all I wanted to say initially. Something has escaped me, but yeah. Choice of clips, I think, is the way to go for this. And that, that's a compliment as well because it sounds so great. So now you, you can consider these other aspects, you know, the presentation side of it. Do you want to go, Lewis, or do you want me? Yeah, I'll go. Um, so, yeah, like I did think this is awesome. And I think we, we always talk about the, uh, the kind of like video editing clips and stuff like that and like having transitions that flow. It's kind of like a trend that's come up in like the last maybe, maybe I want to say kind of like last one or two years of Samsung Cheerios. Like, because I love it. I, I personally love kind of that kind of shot video editing. And I love, I love the, the transitions you've done in this clip. Um, but unfortunately, I think with in this specific show, I can, I think I can tell that you've picked the clips first before doing any of them, or you've kind of like, I don't know. Uh, the, transition, the transitions are so good and they work so well. It seems like it was all planned from the start. However, I'm assuming you then, here's what I think has happened. You've picked the cool the clips first and you watch through them in order. And because of that, I think the clips get progressively better as you go, which is cool, but it's always good to start with your absolute best thing. And it's kind of like the issue when you kind of pick clips that flow together and they have to be locked like this, is that you can't really bring your best stuff to the start without ruining the flow. And uh, as much as I love this sharp video uh, video editing, you got to put the best sounding stuff first at the expense of the video clips, really. And I think, yeah, with the Arcane clip, like I, I know Arcane is a TV show because it's like based on the game and like because it looks amazing and it's there's so much inspiration you can do. I don't mind people putting in their clips. Maybe you should put it towards the end, but like the, of all the clips, the Arcane one I think is the weakest in terms of how it sounds anyway. And because it's like not the most relevant compared to the other ones as well. For for a game reel, by the way, like if you're going, if you're wanting to work on TV, then it's different. Um, but yeah, like compared to like the Assassin's Creed clip, I think the one that comes after it might it might be something else. But compared to the clips, immediately the, the second and third clip sounded amazing. Um, I think the fourth clip, I think it was maybe a bit weaker again. I mean, still amazing, but a bit weaker then. And the fifth clip was great as well. Um, I kind of gone a bit of ramble there. What am I trying to say? Um, yeah, I'd probably 
maybe see if you can swap out the arcane clip for something new, which like Sergio says, is maybe like a, a gameplay clip, like an actual gameplay clip, not a cutscene. Um, and maybe then you can kind of keep the same like cool video flow. But if you if you can't do that, if you want to just kind of like rearrange stuff you've got, then yeah, I'd say put the hyperlight stuff and the Assassin's Creed stuff first. Um, and then what's the next one? Yeah, this this clip, League of Legends ones, I thought that was a little bit weak as well. The only thing I didn't like about it was the footsteps of a person running in the distance. It just sounded like I feel like there's so much going on, but all I could hear was just like pit pat pit pat of the footsteps instead of like you know the kind of the kind of rush of the clothes moving and the rush of like wind and all the magic and all that stuff like that. I could just hear kind of pit pat pit pat footsteps, which didn't really feel like like it was telling the story it needed to. It it, it didn't feel urgent enough. I'm really going on a ramble here, so someone stop me. But um, the, la the last oh, thing I was great. to say, yeah, <laughs> last thing I wanted to say, what was it? Uh, I've really, really talked myself into a hole. You know what? Come back to me because I had, I feel like I had more points, but <laughs> I think I've just talked myself into oblivion. No <laughs> Greg, <worries>. you go. <laughs> I just want to say overall, this is a really killer reel, really amazing. The sounds are incredible. You've got a very defined style as well, I feel like. A very triple A esque, I would say, uh, which is a compliment. Um, and I think it's very clear that you're going for that in the reel as well. Um, I think the the two things, which is, again, not really that big of a sound-wise feedback, but the main thing is that I would, I think Sergio said this, like, it would be great to have, like, one gameplay clip um, just to see how you can do gameplay stuff because that's what you're going to have to do when you do uh, audio tests for studios. They're going to provide you with gameplay. And then that is, again, to what we've already talked about before. You have to really focus on information. What is the most important thing for the player to hear? Feedback, like, you know, what's how is the player getting feedback for the actions of um, what they're doing? And and, uh, and then the emotional and the storytelling, which is what Sergio also really nicely touched on in the beginning. And so I think that will be a really good addition. And the other thing is really to add on what Lewis said with the clips here. So I think... Um, the this one I really liked actually and I was waiting for the next thing to happen and then it got cut and then it's like no I wanted to know what happens here and initially like I just want to listen to this quickly here <laughs> So it would be really cool to hear a bit more dust and stuff, but then it like, and then it gets quicker and then it feels like, you know, now something's going to happen and then it switches and it takes a moment for me to realize that this is not connected um, because it feels like it's building up to something because there's not much going on. The clip isn't providing a bunch of actual like showing off your audio skill a little bit, but um it feels exactly like it's leading into something and, and we've already touched upon this, but I think it would be really good to, to build out kind of, um, to have this clip go on further or to cut this clip and just immediately go into this clip and then extend and extend this slightly to when you have the shot. Because again, you've got the parts that are not that interesting. I mean, to be fair, there's some, the explosions sound really cool. I would love to hear more Foley in this. Because there's like not that much going on, and and I would you know there's like lots of people running and stuff, so it'd be, it'd be cool to hear more foley. But then it's like again leading up to the big moment, and then not going into it. So, or if that, I would almost say okay, immediately transition to this to the impact, because then it would be like the shot versus the impact. So that would then work again. But because it's going from build up. To something else is something else versus here you've got like it explodes and then you're going into this which is beautiful transition and it makes sense like in in a way visually where it's like okay we can our brain can easily process that from from a to b and then going back into here um yeah and i realized that all of us haven't like given that much sound but rather real feedback but i think that's also because i I personally feel like the the reel is really, really good. Um, I think it might be, yeah, I mean, just there's not really one specific thing that I would probably pick out. I think, if anything, just um, when there's not that much going on, 
feel figure out like here like with the foley what's what's happening in the background or in this transition like what what's going on in the background and i think so one thing i would say is the ambiences again fill them out a little bit more um so that will be my one big audio feedback overall but yeah other than that really amazing lewis you had something to say Yes, I remember the point I was going to make because uh, this is this is a controversial uh, audio feedback. So I know you're all saying that you didn't like it, how it had all this build up to the gun firing. I mean, it, the gun never fired. Now, I, I'm not saying to do this because I think more people are going to dislike that than like it. But I actually quite like that you never uh, play the kind of climactic uh, gunshot. Because I think, and, and I'm not saying to do this, just in my opinion, this is because of observation irrelevant from the actual live stream. I think having build up and then not delivering it, delivering on it makes you want to keep watching and you, it makes you want to watch it again because it kind of like makes you kind of like wanting more. Whereas if you kind of give like a, a gun feed a shot and it's kind of like all right or it's not that good, you're going to be like, eh, cool. And you're going to forget about it. So that's, just, that's a controversial take. Here, here's a tip for you. Put the gunshot at the start of the clip. So when they'll get to the end of it, they'll think, I need, need to hear the gunshot. Let me play it again. <laughs> that's Maybe cool. don't do that. Maybe don't do that. But like, that's just me uh, <laughs> riffing on, on the idea. <laughs> if it was on TikTok, if it was a TikTok reel or something, Insta, that could work. That would yeah. work. I, I think the compromise is what Greg said, is, is clipping it in a way that the next clip gives you that satisfaction. But all of a sudden, you're also like, oh, whoa, I'm so something else. Maybe. Yeah, that's probably and, that's probably a good middle ground. Definitely agree. <laughs> and, and, and with that, and with that, well, you, you agree with your own point, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, ju I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's true. And, and I'm with glad that, I, I don't disagree. Some... <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I actually disagree with myself. The um, the text I think as well is something that we did, haven't mentioned in the other videos, but I think the. A better format is for to have the text come up for like two or three seconds and then die down again. So there's nothing distract. And again, I know it's like a really trivial thing to pick out on, but like the other two have said, everything sounds so good that the only thing putting me off at any one point is the editing or the visuals in some way, which is which again, it's a great position to be in basically. But that that for example, that Peggy 18 included in this argument, like. I was distracted by that. Everything else sounded great. Nothing was like throwing me off being immersive apart from that. And I think the text, for instance, if you were going to clip, do that idea that Greg had, like the gunshot ends up being the explosion of the next scene. What can really sell it is that the new text comes up and it's like, okay, we're in a new clip now, by the way. And then it got, dies down again. Um, hmm. it just, again, just a little formatting, little like ad administration, sort of whatever you want to call, like just text comes up, text comes that. Text goes up, it comes up and then goes away, um, so it doesn't distract from the clip. And I think that goes for anybody making a sound reel. Yeah, I think for, for any long time listeners of the stream, I think that might be perplexed because I think we've had some conflicting advice. Was it? Oh, I wasn't there, yeah. but was it? Was it? Was it Presley? Yeah. Who said to keep the text all the time on the screen? Oh, really? Um, yeah. but here's here's the thing. I from my point of view, I mean, release qualified of all of them. <laughs> Is that like I, I don't think it matters too much, but like. I think it's probably a good compromise is to have the text visible all the time, but kind of tuck it away a little bit more. Because I think the I think what Prezi was saying was that if um if you're kind of watching the clip and then you kind of like forget like after the first two seconds or you miss it, like, oh, is this a redesign? What game is this? Who who made it, et cetera? You can't see it immediately all the time. So and, and potentially it kind of blurs the line where one clip and one clip starts. But at the same time, you're right that like if there's text on the screen, I think I don't think this one's too bad, but there's other clips we've seen today which have like you know big black bars across the screen and they're quite kind of visually impeding um so it might be good yeah to maybe tuck it away smaller at the bottom or something um but to be honest like yeah i mean not to not to say your point's wrong because it's not at all but like it's this is such a small point in the grand scheme of things that if that's what you're worrying about then i think you're in pretty good shoes yeah i think it's personal um, preference um one thing is like have the text on screen at some point so people can check yes. <laughs> and don't have it like obstruct too much of the visuals. I think those are the bigger, biggest points um, to take away. But yeah, can, can I get one really last small bit? Sorry, oh, I know it's been on. so long. I know we were saying so much about the kind of presentation, <laughs> the visuals in terms of just the actual sound stuff. I had some a few really quick notes for the arcane clip at the start. Uh, I didn't say before because I think you should probably cut the clip and replace it. But if you don't cut the clip, here's what I think. Um, I think the two biggest things I noticed were number one, not enough ambiences. And I think I think the rest of the clips weren't too bad. But this arcane clip 
had very little ambiences because it's in like a bar with those neon lights it's futuristic like you should be able to hear like buzzing hums all kinds of crazy futuristic bar sounds in there all the time the second one was the sword coming through like the, the pole and starting cutting and stuff we had like some really awesome kind of electrical sounds like you know all that stuff is great but i think similar to the the slime in the bucket from the previous reel like having like more kind of like metal ding impacts when things initially happen at night and really snap having like a kind of like ding, 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 layers on top of that kind of adds intensity makes it feel more urgent feels more dangerous uh just kind of adds that kind of dynamics i think it's lacking so those are my two notes in terms of actual sound design tips uh for a uh, vr cane clip but yes yeah. sounds awesome though really you know i feel like i've not actually said it enough this surreal sounds awesome uh, really really awesome work yeah for sure for sure i think uh yeah so to summarize those those points um the little editing bits and then maybe an addition of of one gameplay scene and um and yeah the the little and contact scene. details what about does it start with that picture of sandwich or whatever like i think i need more than that i need some like i know it's a t again another really tiny thing but if that's the only thing that people see i need some sort of like name or email or something that again i can pause and i can make a note yeah. again punctuation also like you know sound design or whatever like what what you're applying for what you? you're trying to do yeah, yeah. yeah. cool mm -hmm. let's move on sean oh again very minimalist again again oh, minimalist. sorry like my, my tip is to add sound yes <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Great stuff. Great stuff. Claps. <laughs> so first impressions. Okay. Uh, I'll start this time. Um, first things first, there's a huge amount of silence in the beginning where just like nothing is going on. Um, that's like a big no, no, in my opinion for like a sound design reel. So even if it's kind of, and again, it like, it doesn't start until really. Well, it doesn't start until here, but I like this little animation, but I, you know, like one of the things is you could, I would say, start here, like cut this beginning off. And then actually when you bring these in, add sound effects, add like a background ambience, stuff like that. Um, the style is really, really interesting and unique. I've never seen this type of kind of editing before to have these cards and stuff. Um, feels like looks really, really professional and stuff. Um, I think the main thing for me is that it's a little bit tricky to figure out what exactly this reel is for. This reel really like feels like, look, this is me. This is all the things I can do. Um, but kind of if you're sending this to a studio that wants to hire a sound designer, there's only like an incredibly short kind of sound design um, part in there. 
And same with like if you're applying for a dialogue editor, then it's like cool there that's there, but it's also like very small or music editor. So the thing is, it has everything in it, which is really nice uh, and really good, and it's laid out in a great way. It's like wow, you're a really good generalist and all rounder. Um, but the issue for me is is if you're dis if you're applying to a specific job, say you're applying to work at Respawn or something. Uh, then like what is the what is the role you would ideally reply to and uh, apply to and it says sound designer here so i would assume that if if you're trying to get into sound design and a sound design uh kind of area then that would be really good to have a lot more sound design in there and to have kind of the other things that you've done with music editing and dialogue editing more on your website uh, or maybe touch on it as a last like two clips uh, to basically have like really short two clips and then say like, okay, look, like this is some of the stuff you can then also check it on my website to see more. Um, so yeah, I think those are some of the basic initial things. Uh, the other thing is, uh, is again, like in between these, I'm finally here. it's like really long and nothing's happening. So I would definitely like, Again, it's really great graphics and stuff, but it just takes so long for the next thing to happen with no sound. So I think definitely A, add sound, and then B, it will be really good to, um, yeah, make this maybe a little bit faster. Although I know that probably this is like hand animated and stuff, so it really feels bad to say this because I know how tedious this stuff is. Um, and then I think the, the other thing for me is, is the technical stuff. So this is really cool. But the footsteps, they just don't sound really good. Um, so I would say, like, if you're doing even the technical things, like, make them sound really amazing, especially when you're applying to, like, a sound designer position. But I would almost say, and again, sorry, I'm taking up a lot of time here, but, like, this would be something that I would kind of look at on your website, and it's like, that's me, that's all the things I do, versus when you're applying to a studio, I would probably not send this in for a position, um, but if it's like for a sound design position, if they're asking for like generalist, then this is perfect. But specifically like for sound design or something, I would I would focus more on the sound design and add way less of, of the technical and, and the other skills, unless they specifically say like, we want someone who's really technical, but also sound design or something. Um, it's just one of those things where I think a lot of us have done music editing and dialogue editing and other stuff, but within the context of a real kind of you really want to show what they want for the job and kind of what the role is that you're applying for. Um, yeah, sorry, that was a lot of a lot of stuff. Do you want to go next, Lewis? Cool. Yeah, so I totally agree. I think I think I've probably been in a similar situation to I think you're in. This, this kind of seems like you've had like you know some work on like the Madden games, kind of doing you know dialogue editing, music editing, which is awesome. You know, fantastic. Congratulations. Um, but then, like, if if you want to get into sound design, it's kind of tricky to try and how how do you show off like this these like big games you've worked on if they're not actual sound design? Um, I'm I'm gonna assume that like I think yeah you should probably know that when you apply for a position somewhere if if you are applying for positions, um, say you're applying for sound design position like rejig your show reel so that sound design stuff comes first. The actual good sound design stuff is more important than the experience in my opinion, like especially when like in this clip sound design doesn't even come in for about like what, 35 seconds. Um, but like assuming this is just like you know a catch-all share to put on your website for instance that like you know you're not really sending to anyone specifically like i don't really mind the order there because it kind of shows like look i've worked on these big games here's some other stuff i can do like that's kind of all right so just, just think about who's going to see the share and if you're going to be sending something to a studio for a certain job make sure the most relevant stuff is first um and yeah so i think the big obviously the big thing is definitely have sound within like the little cutscene bits where it kind of shows you do, what's doing what. If if you're the one that did the animations of like the kind of the boxes and the fade out and stuff, I'd say to like, you know, probably go and speed them up as much as you physically can whilst it's still readable and comprehensible. Um, obviously add sounds to them as well, but like you can literally just let be like, you know, just like ding, sounds like shoop, done. Rather than kind of like slow fade in, they come in and one lights up, it slows out again. Cause it's just too long, man. You don't, you don't need to, take that long to show like and I think it's quite clear like what you're trying to do but it's like here's my professional work here's my sound design work um it's just taking too long between them I think um but yes what I was going to say was yeah so there's a lot of stuff to digest with this one with the 
with the kind of dialogue editing and the music editing stuff, it's kind of like, it's hard to, it's awesome that you've worked on, you know, Madden doing commentary dialogue editing and music editing, like that's really great stuff. I'm sure there's, you know, it must be super difficult. I'm sure it must be really rewarding at times as well. But like, we can't really tell like if it's any good or not. <laughs> and we don't really know what you did because especially with like the music editing, like I have no idea what you edited. I don't know what it started with. I don't know what you finished with. Well, I do know what you finished, but like, I don't know what the process, you might have just like, you know, taken a track and just like lined it up in, in a scene. You might've done like tons of stuff of like, you know, making stems and remixing stuff. Basically like you can get away of putting, all you, all you have to try and get across is like, I did this and this. You, us being able to hear it doesn't really help that much, if that makes sense. So you can probably shorten it like way more than you, you, you need. Than you think you can like you can have like literally one line of maybe like one or two lines of dialogue and then like literally five seconds of a bit of music and you can cut to the sound design stuff like way way quicker um when it comes to the actual sound design stuff as well like this clip here with the um this resident evil one like sounds really cool actually sounds really really cool but it's probably like the clip's a bit slow in my opinion like well because the whole show is suffering from this a bit slow it takes a lot of time to get going i think having like a slow building horror clip whilst it sounds amazing like you you, you want to try and get retention i say try to pick a clip that's a bit faster paced and a bit more going on um i quite liked the clip uh, where you did the smiley face in the rock so so i quite like that one maybe just even flip them around um and yes, likewise, Greg was saying the footsteps in the system, like I think the technical stuff you did is amazing, but you can just literally just replace the assets you've used, you know, you know make them a bit more consistent. Uh, they sound like they cut, they cut a bit short sometimes. I think that was my big takeaway. It just sounds, doesn't really sound realistic. So say you can, yeah, just kind of like redo the assets, but like keep the implementation stuff. That's all good. Um, I've been talking too much again, so I'll hand over to you, Sergio. <laughs> oh, it was great. It was great. I. I will reaffirm everything that these two wonderful people have just said about your your real Sean. And I'm going to go and be even blunter and say, all of this graphic stuff is lovely. Get rid of all of it. <laughs> because I feel like I don't. I feel like you're applying for four jobs here. I feel like you're applying for sound design, music, um, dialogue editor, uh, technical implementer, and video editor. Right? <laughs> it's super flashy, but it's so distracting, which is like, which is such a shame because clearly I want to dive in and understand what you've done and try and hear what you've done with the dialogue, for instance. And I can't. It's just so busy. Like your name doesn't have to be on it the whole time, for instance. And this professional work, it, this could work if you want this to work. I think it's great, but then have the video zoom in full screen after each one like enters, right? So professional work, video, full screen, and then we're just sucked in. Otherwise. That's one thing. That's the first thing I'd say, because it looks like a website. I hope this is your website because it's wonderful. Um, also, the I think as well, again, if you, you were applying for a job, I wouldn't know who you were and what you were going for. And that would put me off. Same as like what Greg touched on immediately. Right. First thing is that I think your Madden stuff is very impressive. But remember, that will go into your CV and I would have what people who worked on big AAA games do all the time is have a specific reel that's maybe a little bit longer and goes into detail with maybe some text information at the bottom explaining exactly what you did and how much you did for that project. Maybe it's a three minute clip, just Madden music editing or just Madden dialogue editing. Something you can add and show that so that they can look into afterwards, right? Nobody's gonna forget about that. Don't worry about it. And the technical things, it's great that you're showing you can do this technical thing, but I think you could show a more interesting clip it's or, or something maybe maybe involved in, in, a, in a gameplay level or something. And then again, you can put little text on the side saying implementation, footsteps or whatever, custom system. Um, because the other bigger point is that this is, I'm not, you're, you'll tell me in a minute how long this is, Greg, but it feels way longer than a minute. Yeah. And I think if you can't say what you want to say in a minute, give or take 10 seconds, then you're, you're putting too much in or you're not focusing on what's important. Um, and, and then the final note, again, your name is Sean Carpenter. You're a sound designer, but I'm e emailing somebody called the sound effects guy instead. And you've got your YouTube there again, which is which is great. But if I'm a hiring team, do I really want to see that? Or do I want to know how to get in touch with you and your website? Does your website have all these videos that I need to see? Then in which case, just have Sean Carpenter, sound design, your website, which can be the sound effects guy. That's fine. If it were me, I'd have a separate email that, that has my name at gmail.com. It just it just feels way more professional. But I understand you're building your own brand, which again, I, I pose the question to you, Sean, what kind of job are you applying for? Because if you're applying for like indie stuff, then 
this is this is cool. This is showing a lot of different stuff. Maybe not the AAA is isn't that relevant, but if you're applying for a AAA um, studio position, then I don't know what you are. I don't know where you would fit in. And I'm I'm gonna go towards the person who is just a sound designer, and their reel is just sound design. You know, just something to think about. I'm sure you're very talented. These other talents aren't gonna get wasted. It's more about the way you present yourself in order to attract the attention of, of work or a project first and then say, did you know I'm also a music editor? Did you know I'm also a dialogue editor? I worked on Madden, which is super impressive. And then one final thing, one little nitpick. I th- and the sound design is good. I actually like the sound design and the content. That's good. I don't think that's a worry. I think the bigger worry is the presentation. The Resident Evil clip ends with the title Resident Evil coming up and like fading from black. I'm like, it's not that that does nothing. For, like, does that need to be in, for instance? So I think there's a lot of fat you can trim and make this into more a more concise presentation. Yeah, 100%. It's 1 minute 43 seconds. Generally, we have reels around 1 minute, and we usually try and keep it that way. And it's really like the whole thing of, we've said this multiple times, but like the reel is like, you don't know who this person is. Um, sometimes people read a little bit about you first, but then they watch the reel. And then that's really the, the key card. It's the key for the lock of getting into the door and opening it to the interview, right? Because if your reel isn't like... If if you really isn't great, it's like the key doesn't fit the lock, so to speak. So it's really trying to trying to impress within one minute. You've got very little time for people if they're if, especially if it's a triple A job. It's like two three hundred applicants. They have got to trudge through so many reels. You know, like if each of them is one one minute, three hundred applicants. Even if that's down to like a hundred, it's like oh, that's a lot, right? So the thing is, is really like, yeah. Everything that was said, like to 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 sum it up, um, who are you? Uh, who are you trying to apply to? AAA indie. Um, what role? Then specifically make that real for the role. Um, if it's technical, bring your own flair into it. So like again, Sergio perfectly put this. Footstep system is like cool. That's great that you know how to do that, but you know, how can you creatively utilize this? And what's, what's you know, how can you think outside the box to make it more interesting? And obviously you've got tons of really awesome experience in meta sounds, for example. So there's obviously a plethora of amazing stuff that you've done in your own YouTube channel. So that is like way more interesting to me to highlight rather than like a footstep system. So I think, um, and again, the, the, the thing is if, if your show really is awesome, and they'll they'll read your cover letter in CV and they know, okay, you've worked in AAA, I guess, for, you know, doing dialogue editing and, and music editing. So that stuff is already in there. It's exactly like Sergio said. It's like, cool, we know that. That's no no issue. And it's really like the showreel is then killer sound design or killer technical audio, whatever. And then you go to the website and then you can see more or to your sound list or profile. And it's like, ah, okay. So you've got some, you've got a YouTube channel where you do lots of, um you know cool explanation stuff you actually also are a really good dialogue editor you've got like a video about it or whatever uh, or at least maybe an article explaining what you did or something like that if that's possible without nda breaking and whatnot and with ea (laughs) um and all of that stuff so it's really like one minute to wow me and then i want to see more and then i'll check out all the other things and the cv you know, I can see your credits and all of that. So I think, yeah. And and then let's just let's just quickly touch upon the sound design stuff. I would say. So yeah, I, mm. I think you both have talked a lot about it a little bit. I would love to hear more. This is really great stuff. Love this clip in particular as well. Um... Gun sound. Got some really nice interaction there, especially at the end fading out. But I would love to hear more of a difference between when the gun isn't on the rock and then when it is. So like, yeah, like it, it's it's not on the rocks part here, and then when it goes, it will be really cool. Maybe to, you can bring out some of the low end before the shot, and then bring it in uh, when you go into the rock or something like that, or add a bit more like a text or something like that. Um, I'm not sure. But yeah, and then similar to here, I would love to have a little bit more clips with more action. Um, but the sound design, again, really good. 
good stuff in there. So, yeah, it's just a matter of having more because two clips uh, like that are short are really hard to then kind of get a really good picture of you. Uh, yeah. Anything to add? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so a few random notes, basically. Uh, number one, I, I, lo I love the fact that they're drawing a smiley face on the rocks. I was thinking maybe you could write hire me on the rocks. <laughs> maybe it's just that again just something a bit different it's, just it's get, get in their heads a little from bit from <laughs> a uh someone who made like a shade or something like or that's right, the yeah. whole point of it unfortunately so, yeah <laughs> yeah don't don't actually do that but yeah. uh, just again just just these crazy thoughts you. yeah i hire you with that <laughs> I, I think that's the a rock really awesome so. idea lewis <laughs> <The> rocks. <laughs> But it obviously take ages as well. Like, imagine putting that like, your entire email address in there. <laughs> um, anyway, sorry, what was I going to say? I, I think I totally, I think I can totally relate to kind of the situation you might, you might be finding yourself in, which is when I was kind of like, when I was starting out, I had a few, I, I worked in QA for a bit and I did like a few really kind of really small kind of audio things. And I, and I also kind of did like game jam and stuff. And I had like a weird mix. I had some games experience, but none of it was like, none of it sounded very good because it's like it wasn't really like audio it was just like this thing is kind of related to audio it was like you know implementing dialogue or something it's like i did it but like it doesn't really if i put it at the start of my show it doesn't really do anything it doesn't really mean anything and then i had like you know redesigned stuff but like I, I always kind of thought you know but everyone says that experience is so important and all these jobs i'm applying for like list experience is like the being the most important thing so what do i start with do i start with the stuff that's relevant and my, my work experience or do i start with the stuff that sounds good and I think now, now kind of like past that stage, I think I think it's probably better. Maybe people disagree with me, but I think it's better to start with if it's just like redesigns that sound good, start with those immediately. Like just get get your best sounding stuff. I think it's more important than the experience stuff. When you apply for a job like I know, I know, say any kind of I don't know mid level sound design job, if you start with like a show that has all of your great sounding stuff in your cover letter or in the email you send to them, and you say like, oh hi, yeah, I'm a sound designer previously worked for EA or Madden, for instance, like well, already you're showing immediately that you, you do have experience, which is really valuable, but you're not making your show all like, you know, worse because you're making them wait 40 seconds to hear any sound design. So I think, yeah, personally, I'd say definitely start with the sound design clips. You can probably cut out the professional work stuff or like into separate videos like some of just earlier, or you can just kind of have like, make them super short and put them right at the end. Um, yeah, to let people know you've done dialogue editing, music editing on Medan, um, just tell tell them about somewhere else, not in the show reel, I think, or at least not the start of the show reel. Um, and yeah, in terms of actual sound design clips, again, I think I said it before already, like I like, I really like both clips, I like the gunshot. Maybe you could have more stuff when the, in comparison to the gun being fired into the sky, and then when it moves over the rocks, you could have a, like a new layer that comes in for the rocks burning. I'm sure you already do, but maybe you can make it a bit more um, prominent, a bit more different. Um, and yeah, I'd just say I'd say pick another clip. Uh, I have like at least kind of three clips, sound design, redesigned stuff, um, and have something probably a bit more exciting that comes in before the horror clip, or just strip out the horror clip or something more yeah, exciting. Yeah, like a gameplay clip would be great. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Yeah, put get a gameplay clip from something, put it first, because um, you've got some great sound design skills. Might as well show it off immediately, rather than um, yeah, kind of like almost, you're almost like you're flirting around it. Like there's some awesome stuff here. Just show it off. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's all I think I have to say about this one. Yeah, awesome. Well, we have now reached our time actually and gone over <laughs> a little bit. Oh, sorry. Um, but. <laughs> Absolutely amazing job to everyone who've submitted some killer reels today, um, as always. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. And uh, thanks to you two for being part of the stream. If you want to submit your own reels, um, let's see, I will put it in the chat quickly. But it's on gameaudiolearning.com um, slash reel reviews. It's in here. You can just pop your reel in there and then basically... Um, once you've sub submitted, um, it'll go in into the little database, and then when the next stream is, I'll go through the most recent submissions and select uh, four to five, depending on how long they are, and then we'll go over those, and I'll send you an email, so you definitely won't miss it, uh, as long as you check your inbox. So yeah, thank you so much for watching, everyone. Thanks, Sergio and Luis, for, for being part of it. And My pleasure. Have a it was great fun. Great week. Any closing statements? <laughs> yeah, I wanted to say really quick, well done uh, to everybody for submitting something. 
you are all well on your way to achieving the goals that you want. And also well done for being brave enough to put something together. If it's not for the first time, the second, the third or whatever, and submitting it publicly, I know it's scary, but it's, I'm sure you have lots to take away and it, it fills you with confidence every time you do. So fantastic. And it was just, it was lovely to be a part of this. So thank you for inviting me. Yeah. And we always, we always say it every week or every time we do it, like everyone just about on purpose, submitting stuff. It's awesome to submit stuff. Even if you're just watching the stream and you're not even um, submitting stuff yourself, like congrats for checking it out. Cause that kind of, you know, it's great. It's great to, it's great for us. Cause we look like, like, like kind of helping people I and mean, we hopefully it's helpful and hopefully it's helpful for you as well and yeah just great stuff kind of tuning in and submitting stuff it's awesome and as always every anything that i've said and i'm sure the others as well like that you want me to kind of repeat or go over in more detail or something just reach out to me or greg or anyone really to if you have any questions about anything but um hopefully we've made ourselves clear <laughs> um and yeah uh yeah it's just been awesome thank you so much um Make sure to check out gameaudiolearning.com if you haven't already, and Air Wiggles, which Absolutely. will be launching soon. Yes. Woo! Take care, everyone. <laughs> Have a great evening, and see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.